Mike, you brought up something. I want to get to Pat's question right there. So you talked about the development of Khomeini. Mm. So obviously the agency, and without going into details, mm. you can't. You're, you're tracking the intellectual change, the evolution of thought, and the evolution of aggression. I mean, you got people like Manuel Noriega, from mm. the perfect little pawn to the pain in the ass. And when he became a pain in the ass, we went down there and stuck him in a Florida prison. Right? Mm. Yeah. And so you see that. There's a lot of talk today in the Ukraine that said that people looking at Putin, and these are people that are on CNN, MSNBC, Fox, everywhere, and they're saying it really looks in the last five years there's been a change in him, and he's a little off rails. Mm. Are you seeing that? No, I don't think he's. I mean, yeah, I've heard the, the or maybe the, there's been the, an evolution. The assessments, and he's you know, and, uh, yeah. Look, that. But Putin's a good example of this, and it's it's what we were talking about is, yeah. The, the big question right now is that the intel point here that everyone's trying to collect on is what's his plans and intentions, right? So that's saying we're going to get inside this guy's head. What do you have to do to do that? There's a there's a shit ton of assessment that goes on. You're looking for again points of access. You're looking for recruitment of targets that might be able to tell you what the hell's going on uh, with Putin. The honest guy's truth is nobody really knows except for Putin at this point. You know, it's a heavy lift to to, to collect on that target. So, you know, I I, I I'm not. I'm not surprised by this. I think the the idea that there was uh, contact between Khomeini and and the uh, the U.S. government to me makes perfect sense because that's what you, we you see that in other locations, countries throughout history as well. They're you know they're looking to build up their power base. They're looking you know for a, a line of communication, and and yeah, the the agency or or any intel service is out there trying to understand what the hell's going on because they're that's what they're told to do, but. Uh, eh, I forgot my train of thought. You, you know, yeah. I'll tell you yeah. one thing. Evolution of, Here, I, evolution that's of how I fix all my sentences. Eh, yeah, so, uh, anyway. Anyway. But you know what I will say? Here's what I will say. I trust my enemies more than my allies. Let me say why. I trust my enemies more than my allies because every morning my enemies wake up. At least they're honest. They want to do whatever they can to put me out of business. My allies, I don't necessarily fully know their incentives and their motives. I 100% know the incentive, the motives of my enemy. I know the enemy wants to do whatever they can to have an upper edge over me. I'm naive if I don't believe that, okay? But with your allies, you don't necessarily know what is their next 10 moves. Maybe you're move number three, but you're dispense, you know, you're, what's the word? Dispense, uh, you're, uh, you can be. Dispense, you're disposable. Uh, indispensable, disposable disposable. in move number eight. Mm. And you're like, oh, he's acting like an ally, but what is really his motive of being an ally? Versus the enemy's like, look, I want to kill you. It's that simple. I want to put you out of business. Uh. I trust that Russians' motives are more honest than anybody else's that's sitting there saying, oh, my gosh, Iran defending Ukraine. Yeah, yeah, I don't trust what the hell Iran is doing mm. saying stuff about Ukraine. I don't trust that. I trust the fact that Putin saying, that's our land. We're going to take it. Here's what we're doing. Uh, not in a positive trust. It's a yeah. trust of a very honest trust of the enemy. So for me, when I'm sitting here thinking about this. You know his playbook. This, you know yeah. his playbook. You don't like the playbook, yeah. but you know the playbook. Yeah, I, I, I know fully this is a true believer we're dealing with that knows what he wants and is going after it. Well, he's been, he's been very consistent. So to, to answer your question, people are thinking, is he going off the rails? Well, no, he's consistent in his moves, whether it's. You know, what he did in Crimea, what he, what he did in Chechnya, what he, you know, did in Abkhazia, what he did in South... I mean, it's, it, it's the same thing that he's been doing, and he's been very clear, to your point, he's been very honest about, you know, the fall of the Soviet Union was the greatest tragedy of the 20th century. And he believes mm -hmm. that, and he said it and repeatedly, and, and his intent has always been to recreate a sphere of influence. So he is being very honest about this. So I think when people say, oh, my God, we can't understand what he's doing, it's mm -hmm. what he does. Well, Pat, shouldn't let be me ask you, Pat, because yeah. I fully He's really agree. what he views as Mother Russia. I fully agree mm -hmm. with what you're saying, is that you 100% trust your enemy because yeah. you know exactly what their motivation is, yeah. whereas your allies, you might not be sure what is down the line. Yeah. Like, I think of the movies, like, even in Batman... Um, or the Dark Knight, or even mm. in like the movies like The Town, you're robbing a bank together. Boom, you know as soon who as Joker you, is. Exactly. But as soon as you get, yeah. well, he knows that the cops or the Batman yeah. is going to come after him, and that's his enemy. But as soon as they get the money, boom, he kills a couple of his guys. Boom, he keeps all the money. So the next question here is we know Putin's the enemy, right? I mean, that's mm. fair to say. But the next question is our ally here is this guy Zelensky. What do we truly know about him? What is he really our ally? Does he, what does he want from the world? That's, I think, the big question here. Yeah, there's degrees. I, I, 
there's degrees of <laughs> good and bad, right? I mean, it's like the agency. What you, one thing you you learn very quickly is it's nothing's black and white, and yet you know the the world wants to frame everything that way, right? So now the social media story is, oh my God, you know the the, the Ukraine. Well, look, Ukraine had a lot of problems, right? Corruption being you know up the top of the list. So and there's a very difficult history there in, with Ukraine, and so. We just have to be aware of that. It doesn't change the fact that Putin's an asshole. And, and, and I look over at Tom again. And, um, <laughs> and uh, it's, it's, it's officially real. It's official. So, yeah, yeah. You have a CIA uh, guy that thinks so, you're an asshole, Tom. Best but, of luck. Uh, that's just what the file tells me. And so I think. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. So I'll see you next week, guys. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> Tom but, Ellsworth goes missing and yeah. hasn't seen him in 60 to 90 days. <laughs> but yeah, the, the you know I guess the point being is that. With Zelensky, um, yeah, you ha you just have to be pragmatic about all this. And and the one thing I do worry about is is how simple everything gets framed, right? Mm -hmm. And how quickly the news story you know becomes this three minute bite of of, of everything. And yeah, if you look at at what we're doing right now, um, in terms of I mean to bring Iran by, back into it, if you look at the negotiations indirect that we're having with Iran and utilizing Russia now, right? To in part to try to you know uh, develop an alternative uh, supply line for oil, and in part, and this is where I'm very cynical. It's because you know the current administration here in the U.S. realizes we can't suffer these fucking gas prices for very long because the midterm elections are coming up, mm -hmm. and so we got to do something. So for political reasons, maybe I'm being cynical. You know they're pushing forward on this negotiation because they. Damn it, we got to get these sanctions off so we can let the Iranian oil flow so we can keep prices down so we don't get our asses kicked in the election. If you enjoyed this short clip, click over here to watch another short clip. And if you want to watch the entire episode, the entire podcast, click here.